Championship Monday. So right now, I'll tell you what we do. Let's take a look at what an incredible week it has been. Only the fourth time ever for the Bassmaster Elite Series to come to this incredible place. Here we go with our Humminbird Unlock the Lake. Yeah, get a good look at the Humminbird Unlock the Lake here. Lake Griffin, which is always seems to be a big player when we come to Harris Cheney Lakes. Tyler Williams spent a lot of his time, all four days, spent a fair amount of time there in Lake Griffin. Uh, more color than a lot of the other lakes. Uh, like I said, a lot of history, whether we're here in January, February, April, whatever. This time uh, of the year, late April, it doesn't really matter. Harris. Chain of Lakes, Lake Griffin is certainly a player. Every morning it seemed like, at least on day one, it was all jig fish for him. We got to see him on day two, three, and four. He started to work in that jerk bait early in the morning. Davey capitalized on maybe an offshore shad spawn a little bit. He caught his biggest fish yesterday doing that. But that offshore game in Griffin, after he'd make a move over there, he'd start to upgrade throughout the day. And that started to fade off the last two days. But overall, plenty of good fish and plenty of good weight to be had in Griffin for our top five. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and not as many people over there this year. Uh, typically, it's not surprising to see half of the field just over there in Griffin. But uh, Tyler Williams has, has kind of got the M.O. And it's early on in his Elite Series career of fishing away from the crowds, fishing isolated pieces of cover, and he certainly was able to do it over there fishing uh, a few brush piles and then also some, some grass beds. 17-2 on day one, 17-9 on day number two. 16, 14, super, super consistent yes. throughout this tournament. We saw him really utilize Griffin last fall in the Bassmaster Open. He lived in Griffin and was able to get a top 10 in Griffin, so we might just rename it Barefoot Bandit's favorite lake, Lake yeah. Griffin. If we go to another rookie who also occupied Griffin, it might not get the win this week, but Davey, it's going to have 40% of our top five most likely with yep. Trey McKinney and Tyler Williams utilizing this lake a whole bunch. Yeah, Trey McKinney starting out, getting him a limit, fishing around the locks, sometimes in the locks but all good, but just kind of getting those confidence fish, but then he'd come out in Lake Griffin, uh, fish some brush piles a little bit, fish a lot of open water for the roamers. I think he helped Tyler out just a little bit, saying, hey, just look around for some of those roamers. They're the bigger ones, just like this one here. Good solid tournament for him from start to finish. Today, he's got to think about the one that got away, that one fish later on in the day that it really seemed to cost him. Yeah, and he utilized a lot of different spots, not only in Griffin, but around the lock. There's no, no fishing sign. He's made the most of it, had some current flow, was able to catch him on a jig, able to catch him on top water and a glide bait before he started switching to a jerk bait. Just a great tournament for KJ Queen of North Carolina. KJ started out uh, with a, a good day, a day number one, 19 pounds, and he kept it going. Had a little drop off on day number two, 15 pounds, and then 19 pounds again on day number three. Really interesting to watch KJ take advantage of the shad spawn earlier, although he was using a green pumpkin vibrating jig. Most of the other anglers were using white swim jigs and also some white vibrating jigs. And then once the sun got up, he really, really caught a lot of wood. He actually took to the scales, culled some of those early morning fish out. A lot of these fish, clear water, canal, Sight fishing, some of them on the bed, some of them just cruisers. Had a couple missed opportunities. He could have uh, had a little more than he did, but all in all, a very, very good tournament for KJ Queen. Absolutely incredible. When you'd have those afternoon lulls, Tommy, we were worried about KJ Queen, but in those lulls, yeah. he would be the one who would rise up and make those key afternoon calls to yeah. stay in the top five. The former college team of the year angler at Bethel University having his best elite finish. How about this man? JT Tompkins, of course, the uh, the points winner last year on the Tackle Warehouse EQ circuit and uh, showed what uh, what kind of skills he has, especially skills at locating big fish. And we're all curious to talk to the anglers of how their practice went. And, and honestly, just about everyone I talked to before this event started was like, man, there's something wrong. It's not going to take very much weight. The fish don't weigh a whole lot. JT said, I had a good practice. I caught 28, 30 pounds. I, I really think I could, could do that in the tournament. I'm fishing offshore, fishing brush piles, fishing for some roaming fish with a glide bait. A lot of his fish came on this brown jig right here, a, a, a brown half ounce jig with a flapping hog trailer, he said. Uh, just a good, good tournament. We just saw today was a big, big moment there when we saw the leader, John Garrett, land a seven pounder. 
and JT Tompkins had a seven pounder, maybe even an eight pounder hung mm. up in brush pile for about eight minutes and he was not able to land that fish. And for our eventual uh, leader and champion throughout the th three or four days of this tournament, John Garrett, him and JT Tompkins, both very young, 22 and 26, roughly in age, have been to the Harris chain over 10 times in their semi-pro and college and, and other tournament okay. trails. These two guys knew this lake and JT used it well in the offshore brush, but John, he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to win this. I'm so tired of fishing conservative. That was his worst opens finish last year, was in the state of New York mm -hmm. fishing conservative. He said, I'm gonna go for it. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series, put up or shut up. And boy, Davey, did he find a spot and was patient enough to see it come to fruition. Yeah, he might be a rookie, officially a rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but I don't know of any part of him that I would call a rookie other than you have to call him that on the Bassmaster Elite Series. A lot of experience, a lot of poise, a lot of patience, and you have to give him credit for sticking to his guns, wanting to catch the five biggest fish he could. And, and we talk about that all the time, man. Why, why wouldn't anybody and everybody want to do that? Well, that's a lot easier said than done when conditions are tough to go out there for eight hours and truly only get six or seven bites and stick with that plan. John Garrett did just that. Tommy, we got to see out of just our top five for Unlock the Lake, four different lakes represented. You got Dora, you've got uh, Carlton, you've got Griffin, and you've got Harris. We can add a pop gift for some of our top 10. Eustace was a player for guys like uh, Lester as well. What a performance, eight lakes, and that's your Hummingbird Unlock the Lake, Tommy. First time ever to see this uh, Harris chain of lakes this time of year, and I think it's been wildly entertaining and a great, great performance. First of all, starting out with 24 pounds and never letting his foot off the gas, John Garrett, and that is your Hummingbird Unlock the Lake.